As you may know, my job is to make folk instrumentals on this channel. And because of this, artists now reach out to me as well. If you're watching this video, you might be interested in producing tracks and or transitioning to one-on-one -on -one work with artists. So today I wanted to walk through the process of producing a track for an artist start to finish. Colt Piner is a 15-year-old folk artist from Wilmington, North Carolina, and he reached out to me in December to get his song Advice produced. So step one was to figure out just exactly what the work was going to be. We talked and he said he wanted the songs produced, mixed, and mastered. After deciding on cost, I had to figure out which way to go about producing. I'm nowhere near North Carolina, so the only option was to have Colt record his vocals at his place and then send them over to me. For that, I needed a clean, quality recording, and Colt had an SM7B and a pair of 140 Airs from Lewitt. Perfect. I had him send a demo to a click track. It sounded like this. I had a dream last night about the good times. It was great, it was on time, it was a regular BPM without a decimal, and it was exactly what I needed. Guitars and vocals. He liked Zach Bryan, Cole Wetzel, uh, Brian Martin. Honestly, I'd only heard of Zach Bryan at this point. I got the demo in the session, and I mapped it out to figure out what section was what, and what chord progression was to be played. As soon as that was over, I got to recording. I recorded the acoustic guitar along with the demo, and I used this Fender Acoustic Electric. It's an FA series? FA 345CE? It's like 450 bucks. And I used these two mics, the Lewitt 040 stereo pair, pointed at the 12th fret and just off the bridge. I like to use those mics, the Lewitt 040s, and as well this mic right here, which is a GXL2200BP from CAD, but I switched out the capsule to an RK47 capsule. Those are my go-to mics for acoustic guitar. I recorded some higher sections for the chorus, rhythm layers, you know, the acoustic trifecta which just so happens to be the name of my new acoustic drum kit pack. Three studio recorded acoustic drum kits, along with in-depth lessons and other loop kits, all available on Patreon. Sorry for the plug. Colt sent over five takes each on the SM7B and the Lewitt 140 Airs. After hearing them, I preferred the SM7B for the lead vocal and held on to all the other takes for doubles. I checked over the vocals and we refined it over the next couple days, eventually getting the final lead vocal about three days later. I use a hybrid approach of recording and mixing at the same time and then going into a final mix once everything is tracked. So this next segment is gonna be called the production. After the acoustic guitars was the electric guitars, organ, roads, and bass. And I also added the piano in the second version of the mix, but more on that in a sec. Let's dive into the session and see exactly what I've got going on. All right, welcome to the first session. Clearly you can see this is the mini map I was talking about earlier. This is the demo, which is the exact same thing I played in the video. Cool. So using that, I recorded the first guitar. That sounds like this. That's just going through some Red 3 compressor. That's the Focusrite compressor. You get it for free if you have a Focusrite uh, interface. Light EQ, uh, looks like light MS EQ. Um, light regular EQ with some Pro Q. Uh, a bit of Soothe, maybe a ton of Soothe. No, not too, too much, just to get the uh, the clicks out. And Track Spacer, looks like it is being sidechained to the lead vocals. So whenever the lead vocals play, it ducks the, uh, the guitar in that frequency right there cool okay let's uh let's test that with the actual this is not the final lead vocal this is the uh the first lead vocal that colt sent lot of things that you know. see that so that's how that works next we've got these two uh rhythm ish like high guitars not fully pan left and right but you know more more wide than not And that with the guitar would sound like this. Now I can't remember if I processed and then flattened these. I don't think I did. I, I'm pretty sure this is just literally straight from the recording, no processing, just that's how it sounds. So, nice. Uh, for bass, we just did a bass DI with a jazz bass type of thing. It's not technically a jazz bass. It was made by, it was, it's custom made. Um, but it's it's like a Fender jazz bass, and it, it's going directly into Amplitude. And if I recall correctly, yeah, it'll be uh, the SVX Pro. I like this amp. I've used it in real life. Um, I mean, I don't have one right now, so I just prefer to use it digitally. Uh, we've got the ultra low engaged. Looks like no EQ. A little bit of compression, but again, pretty pretty standard stuff. And a cut at let's see, 230 hertz. It sounds like this. Typical bass. Drums are VST, actually. They're all superior drummer. This is the routing. And looks like the drum kit is close to the standard drum kit. A 
little latency there. It's a big project. Rhodes is going to probably, yeah. Rhodes was flattened, but it was the stage 73 from Arturia. So you can hear some delay and some, uh, some EQ. Let's check this EQ. Yeah, cool. So, so far we've got all this. That's pretty much the instrumental, uh, the main parts of it anyway. Uh, we do have some electric guitar coming in on the very last chorus. Those would sound like this. Which, yeah, their amplitude, um, I, I think I remember just increasing the room a bit on this amp, because uh, I wanted some lively room sort of guitar. Same thing on this one. Might even be the exact same amp. No, it's a different amp, it's a Mazda 18 Junior. Maybe inspired by some Brad Paisley thing. I know he uses masses. Maybe not that one. Probably not that one. Uh, but yeah, that's the guitar. With some room. That's without the room. And with the room. It's subtle, but you can hear it. And uh, some compression. I wanted to push these in the background, so pretty much the transients are cut off. Not cut off, but transits are heavily compressed cool oh yeah and we got the organ i forgot about the organ the organ i believe yeah it's an analog lab patch sounds like this literally just playing along to the chords um let's see what patch this is it is mr jimmy smith shadow jimmy smith some compression probably the same sort of thing oh yeah limiting basically Really getting a, those uh, those transients out of the way. Uh, some MS processing. Looks like I ducked the mids at 408, and I ducked the sides at 2 kilohertz, um, which I would imagine is just the sharpness. Let's see. Yeah, gets rid of some of the sharpness. Lovely. We'll skip past the lead vocals right now. Look at all this processing. I actually did more processing on the on the final mix. I'm sure you could get the same result with fewer plugins, but uh. This just happened to be the, the workflow, I guess. It's pretty funny. Uh, the Vox doubles, I believe they stayed the same across the two mixes, so this will be accurate. Looks like it's just our Vox, mainly for the gate and some heavy compression on the bus, and then auto-tune on, the, uh, on the individual tracks. I, I just like tight-tuned harmonies, uh, or tight-tuned vocal uh, doubles. Sounds like this. Uh, those, like I said before, are just alternate takes for the lead vocals. Works really well. Um, kind of, kind of love when people send me multiple takes of lead vocals because the ones that aren't as perfect as the lead, I can use for doubles. Um, and it looks like yeah, the compression is pretty crazy. Just to push them in the back. Uh, speaking of back, background vocals, which I mean are kind of the same as doubles. They're again the just the alternate takes, uh, but processed differently. Just some, uh, looks like 1176 on the bus, and then the individual ones unprocessed. And that just adds a bit of thickness to the vocal. And it sounds like there's some chorusing effects happening here. Let's see. Somewhere, it might have been printed into the actual track. It could be like a phaser or a chorus. can't remember if I actually use that in the final mix, but if I did, that's how I did it. So the lead vocals up by themselves. Bugs, you don't always feel like a million bugs, with the doubles. But that look in your eye gets more wild, so Adds a little more width. And then the background vocals. With thoughts in your head. See? Not incredibly noticeable, but adds a bit of thickness to that lead vocal. In a bit, we'll hop into the second session and we'll go over how I actually mix the vocals. Now hopping into the second mix session, we can take a look at this piano, which was done with the UAD Ravel Grand. In the second session, we can also look at the vocals. About the good times. As typical vocals through Melodyne and or Autotune and then into proper mixing. Okay, second session. I have to admit, I was uh, a bit stupid. I did a lot of organization in the Dropbox over the uh, over the break, and some samples are lost. They're in there somewhere. I just 
haven't found them and can't be bothered to look for them because the song is done. But of course, you may need them in the future. Don't lose your files. To remedy this, I just flattened them. This is what the file looks like. Not that it really matters. Let's go into the actual mixing portion, which is kind of crazy. Kind of super crazy. I don't think I've ever used this many plugins in a, on a vocal before. Maybe I was just excited about the new SSL plugins I got. As always, like I said in the video, it starts with Melodyne. Um, just, just tuning. I mean, what, what else can you say? Tune the vocal. Uh, I didn't really think he needed auto-tune on this, but I, I love the auto-tune vibe. Um, makes, makes stuff sound more polished. So here's the auto-tune settings. Without it. With it. Would have worked with or without autotune. Um, I just prefer the polished sound. Okay, now to the actual vocal chain. I took off all the plugins and then I'm going to add them step by step just to, just to, I guess, go through the process that I went through when I was doing it. Okay, so this is the vocal without the SSL Fusion Drive. I had a dream last night. In other words, totally dry, except for the, uh, the editing, the tuning. Next, we'll add it on. I had a dream last night. I had a dream last night. Barely audible. Maybe it's even not audible. I had a dream last night. I like to think it's audible. Maybe it's placebo. Throw into the 1176. I had a dream last night. Just to tame. This is off. I had a dream last night. And on. I had a dream last night. Again, very barely audible. Um, it's more audible when he gets louder. Soothe. Soothe is a controversial plugin. People don't like it because it does too much. People love it because it does a lot. I just use it when I feel like I should use it. You know, everything about that. I had a dream last night. Just to get rid of the annoying vocal frequencies. I had a dream last night. I had a dream last night. You see, makes it sound better. And a Pro G for the gate. I like to use the, uh, what's it called? The Arvox gate? Amazing. Uh, I guess I just used the Pro-G today. I had a dream last night. I actually never use a Pro-G, but just a gate. And then into an LA-2A, just to even out the average. I had a dream last night. You see, it's barely, barely being hit. Uh, I try to shoot for 2 to 3 dB. Um, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't get it around here. This is pretty low. You might get it around here. Let's check. I don't always feel like a million bucks, but looks like it's just negative one. Again, some even compression. Got an EQ on there. Uh, looks like a dynamic EQ, just getting rid of 450 hertz. I don't always feel like a million bucks, but seems pretty warranted. That's at a terrible frequency. DSer. I mean. DSer does what a DSer does, DSs. And a Valhalla room for some placement. They give more than. And some fresh air for some high end. You might be wondering, um, you DS and then you add a high end. Yes. They give more than. You start to think about the life that you've led. And that's the full vocal chain. It's kind of crazy. Um, I guess it's not crazy, it's just a lot of plugins doing a little bit of things. Um. Cool. Uh, I did add this piano as well, actually. It's a Labs piano. It's just this, uh, let's see, I'm going to assume it's the, yeah, soft piano. Sounds like this. And, oh, I forgot I added the solo. Little guitar solo here. Uh, Archetype Pliny, perfect, amazing plugin. The patch, let's see, looks like that's it. These are the plugins, or the, the pedals. Using that amp, cool. Uh, and then this would be the processing here. Just a bit, uh, oh, this is a, I don't know what this utility is doing here. Saturn 2 for some saturation, Valhalla Vintage Verb for some verb, and some EQ, and some track spacer tied to the vocals. So same thing as the acoustic guitar. Here's some dogs barking. Let's see what it sounds like. Mm -hmm. 
lot of go a lot of stuff going on. Um, let's put it in with the mix, and we'll see how it sounds. That's a guitar solo, and uh, like I said before, the grand piano. Same thing, track space, she's a lead box. Really wanted to make space for the vocals. Uh, and some Pro-Q, let's see what I was cutting out here. Please ignore the dogs. Uh, 160, yeah, some boominess, cool. Let's see what that sounds like, all the stuff I added in the second mix. Uh, and then if we actually look in here, there's some automation going on. Some automation going on here. You know, it's like the little between section. Yeah, so let's listen to that section again, the actual full mix. When the final day comes, I know we'll all say You didn't know it's And that's the mix. Okay, cool. Back to the video. As for mastering, super simple. I really enjoy the Hitsville Mastering EQ, and I typically use a limiter and some sort of light compression in EQ. After the very first mix, Colt sent it over to Brian Martin's producer, and we got this text. After hearing all that, all we had to do was some finishing touches, and in the end, we settled on and were happy with the last mix, which is what you're seeing in this session. The project was super fun. Hopefully you've had or will soon have an opportunity to work one-on-one -on -one with some artists on some cool projects, and hopefully the layout of the process in this video can help you navigate it. Thanks for watching, and check out cold stuff here. It'll be linked in the description. And by the way, if you've heard some dog steps throughout this video, uh, that would be Gigi. She's behind me looking for mice, but I don't think there's actually mice here. And to be fair, I don't think she's ever caught a mouse, so I don't know. I wish her the best. See ya.